the main concept of the simplex method is one, start with a basic feasible solution. Two, from that basic feasible solution, go to an adjacent basic feasible solution. The condition for going to an adjacent is if the adjacent provides a better Z value. Three, to make sure that the next adjacent extreme point that we are going is feasible, we use a min ratio. We will find the ratio and we will pick the least among that ratio. List among that ratios is called min ratio. You need to start, simplex method starts with what? A basic feasible solution. How do I find a basic feasible solution? We introduced one of those techniques to you. If the origin is part of the feasible region, then you have the origin as your basic feasible solution. And when we say part of the feasible region, doesn't mean in the middle of the feasible region, a corner point of the feasible region. In that case, your first basic feasible solution is very easily done. You just use the standard form, put them into the tabla with S1, S2, S3, S4, as many of you as you have, as your basic variables. So if, if that is the case, then that is your basic feasible solution. From that point on, everything is the same. Tableau, 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 until you reach optimal solution. However, if, if that point is not part of the feasible region, then you don't have any easy way of starting with a basic feasible solution. Today's lecture, today's topic is about that case. It relies on the fact that you know how regular Tableau format works. The only thing that we are doing right now is considering a different case and how to approach that. So let's talk about this. Let's start with this. This is an example. This is an example similar to what we did in our practice. These were the corner points. These were the corner points. For this problem, the solution was very simple because origin, because origin is an extreme point of the problem. What this problem has, what this problem has when I write the LP, has one big characteristic that I can easily see. And that characteristic is that all the constraints are in the form of less than or equal zero. Because in the form of less than or equal zero, all the slacks that I am going to put into those constraints to make them in a standard form are in the form of 
plus S's. So it is plus S1, plus S2, plus S3, which makes S1, S2, S3, and whatever it is, a good candidate to go into the basis. So in this case, it was straightforward. However, let's add another constraint to this. And we're going to add a constraint like that to the problem. What it does, it immediately takes this point, which was the origin, off the off the list of the feasible extreme points. If that is off the list of the feasible extreme points, then I cannot use S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 as my basic variables. Because if they are basic variables, it means that X1 and X2 are 0. X1 and X2, 0 refers to this point. And this point is not a feasible extreme point. Simplex method requires, number one, to start with a feasible extreme point. So if you cannot start with a feasible extreme point, whatever you do is meaningless. In simplex method. So you are either on the mercy of trial and error to say, how do I find one of these? Of course, if it is a two dimension, something like this, you can actually calculate one of those and say, oh, this is the, this is the feasible extreme point. So you would calculate what the actual basic variables are here and what are the non-basic variables. But that's not what we are going to be doing. We are going to be using a different technique. And to use this technique, we need to go back and talk about the reason that we choose a variable. Okay. Max z equal 10x1 plus 9x2 minus 4x3 plus 5x4. In a standard form, that line reads z minus 10x1 minus 9x2 plus 4x3 minus 5x4 equals 0. There is no equal sign here. There is no max here. It is like a regular equation. We go back to our common sense approach. We said, first of all, first of all, I have started at 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0. Z, 0. S1, S2, S3, S4 equal my basic uh, variables. Uh, x1, x2, x3, and x4 are my non-basic variable. And I say, is z0 optimal? I will look in here. I say, all these things are 0. I can do better than 0 by raising one of these values by raising them from what? From zero. 
increasing them. And as I increase those values, as I increase those values, Z increases. For example, I can pick X2 and I say, oh, I'm going to increase X2 instead of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And I, as I increase x2, z becomes 9 times 0.1, 9 times 0.2, 9 times 0.3, and so on. It, it keeps increasing. It keeps increasing. I can do the same thing for x1, one at a time. One at a time. I'm, I'm just making a case. Why one at a time? The adjacent. The adjacent is the key point. You're trying to go to an adjacent extreme point. And an adjacent extreme point is an extreme point that is different with the previous one only in one variable. That's what we're talking about, one variable at a time. So I can increase one variable to what I want. Increase, 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 whatever it is. Okay, back to common sense. If I have to choose one of these, which one would you go with? You would select X1. Why? It gets you the greatest yield. Ten times that. Now, in terms of a standard form, which is in the tableau, this is not in the tableau. Standard form is in the tableau. It's the most negative, which makes this minus 10. So this is, this is how you go. That is what the rule comes from this. And it says, how do you select the entering variable? You go with the? Most negative. Most negative in the zero. Now, it would be good if we could increase it as much as we want, but we cannot do that. What would stop us? You cannot increase this as much as you like. Why? Because there are constraints which would stop you. So, or set of constraints. And if you keep increasing this, at some point in time, you will hit a wall. Constraints would stop you. To find out which one of those constraints would stop you first, what would you use? Min ratio. Min ratio. ratio would stop you. In this case, One of the problems that we have is that we cannot find the, find this, find a feasible extreme point easily. We come back in here. We said, we will select X1 because it has the most negative. In terms of this, in terms of this, this is the most positive. But we talk about the, talk about this. I'm not choosing this, although this is good also. I'm not choosing this, although this is good also. It will give me reward, because I have to choose one of them at a time. So I go with the most reward, as I think. I'm not approaching this, which in this case is positive. Why won't I approach this? Because if I increase x3, my z from 0 becomes even worse. I increase x3 by 5 units, my z becomes minus 20. From 0, it goes to minus 20. I'm not approaching that because the coefficient is negative. Common sense 
I'm not approaching something which is negative. In here, I'm not approaching something which is positive. So if all these things are positive, what would I say? That's optimal solution. That's the rule. If everything in the zero is positive, it means in this original form they are negative, and if I increase them, I would make the z worse. Okay. One of the things that we want to talk about it in a second is this. If I have a tableau at some iteration, not the first one, at some iteration, and again, as, as you remember, this is not a legitimate tableau, so x1 and x5, okay? x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, s1, s2. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, x2, um, negative 3, 1, half, 4, x3, negative 1, 0, um, 2, x4, uh, 3, um, 2, and 1 quarter, x5, uh, 0, 0, 1, s1, um, 2, minus 1, and 3, s2, 5, um, 1 half, and 1 half, and z value 10, uh, 4, and 6. It's not a legitimate tableau. I just made it up. If I have this, if I have this, don't forget, each one of them represents an equation. Just like the first one. How did we do the first one? We took the standard form, copied them into the tableau. What about this one? It's after some row operations. I ended up with this. I'm looking at the numbers and they, they are okay to me. X1 is a basic variable, so it is 0, 1, 0. X2 is, X5 is a basic variable, so it is 0, 0, 1. Right hand side is positive. Right hand side is positive. And this looks like a legitimate tableau. Just on the surface, it looks like a legitimate tableau. But don't forget, every one of them represents a, an equation. What is the equation for the first one? How do you write that equation for the first one? It is 1x1, 1 plus 1 half x2 plus 2x4 minus s1 plus 1 half s2 equals 4. That's how you put them from the standard form into the tableau. And the second one, 4x2, and the z is going to be no x1, negative 3x2, negative 1x3, plus 4x4, 3, sorry.
No x5 plus 2s1 plus s2 equals 10. We'll go with 5 in here. This is what the tableau is. And that is our representation. Any question about this? It's very important that you know what these things are. We are going to connect now this with this with this all together to help us find a way to do something about the cases where this specific point is not a basic feasible solution like this case and how is that I am going to do that I'm going to introduce a new variable and I'm going to call that variable artificial variable who will for a couple of minutes, we will stop this discussion. We go back to something in here. This is a feasible region for a problem, which has x1 greater than 0, x2 greater than 0, and probably x plus y less than or equal 5, less than or equal 5. If I add to this problem an equation, a line itself, like for example, um, the line of um, x2 minus x1 equals 0. This is that line. This is the line of x2 minus x1 equals 0. So my set of constraints are something less than or equal and something which is equal to 0. Where is the feasible region of this problem now? That is the feasible region of this problem. It is only that piece of the line. That piece of the line is on the line, and that piece of the line satisfies the other constraints. There is an equality in there it means it's on that line. If it is more than two variables, it's on that plane. If it is more than three variables, it's on the hyperplane. But it is on that one, the one that has equal sign in them. Now, when we have less than or equal sign, we can add slack variables. When we have greater than or equal sign, we would subtract those variables. If we have equal, what do we do? Nothing. It is already equal. Back to this. I will be using an artificial variable. An artificial variable will be used where I do not have a basic variable identified easily. An artificial variable will be added to that. An artificial variable will be added to the standard problem, to the standard form of the problem, not to the original problem. 
to the standard form of the problem. We call artificial variables R1, R2, R3, whatever it is. And we will make sure that they are greater than or equal to zero. But there is one problem. There is one problem. What is the signs in a standard form? She says equal sign. And then you say, if that is the case, if it is balanced, and you're adding an artificial variable to one side of it, what would happen? You make it unbalanced. You make it unbalanced. So you cannot have the equal sign anymore. You add an artificial variable, you add an artificial variable, you will make it unbalanced. So what would you do now? I say, okay, I come back to common sense. And I say, I'm going to pretend like nothing happened. I add artificial variable, I'm not going to change the sign. I'm going just to just pretend that it is not there. But at the same time, I'm going to do something to make sure that it will not be there down the road. How? Do you remember this discussion that we had? Why didn't we want to approach X3 at all? Because it has a negative. negative coefficient in here. That's what I didn't want to approach it. I say, OK, let me use that concept. And I say, I will add artificial variable, but I will also add artificial variable in here in here, what makes its coefficient a very large number with a negative sign. So I will use a very large number and I say, what is a very large number? You say 2,000, 5,000, 10 billion. I'm going to just use a something called M. So I will use that. That is representing a very, very large number. You say, what do you mean? What is it? So I'm not going to use a specific number. It's a very, very large number. You say it's a thousand, I said larger. You say ten billion, larger. Whatever it is. It's a very, very large number. But I don't want to get involved with the regular actual digits and all those things. I just say it's a very large number, and it is positive. So I'm going to add an artificial variable, but at the same time, I'm going to subtract it here, minus MR1 minus MR2, minus MR3, whatever I have, minus MR4. So when they come back here, they become plus MR1, plus MR2, plus MR3 equals zero. Does that make sense to you? Every artificial variable that you add you do minus M in maximization problem, you do minus MR. Look at R1. R1 is only in one constraint 
there is, it's not in the other constraints, so it is in the form of, I don't know, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Looks like a very good candidate for basic variable. So let's start doing an example. Maximize, and we will use the same thing. x1, x2, x3, x4, greater than or equal to 0. Write the standard form of the problem. And then you say, OK, I have to do the same thing about that. So I'm going to do this, that, that's the standard form of the problem. So you cannot start this on a tableau directly, can we? No. Okay. Why not? Because you're looking for the candidates for basic variables. What is a good candidate for a basic variable? There's only one occurrence of that variable anywhere in here, anywhere in here, there's one occurrence of that variable with a coefficient of plus one, and it is nowhere else. So is Z a good one? Is S1 a good one? Okay. So for that and this, I don't have a problem. Is there anything in this one that's a good candidate? X3 is not a good candidate because true. It's here with a coefficient of 1, but it exists other places. Can I make X3 a basic variable? Yes. You can make x3 a basic variable, but you have to do something. You have to do row operation to get rid of x3 in here. You have to do row operation to get rid of x3 there. You have to do row operation to get rid of x3 there. If you do that, x3 becomes a, a good candidate for a basic variable. But that's a long shot. Okay. Why is it a long shot? Because I don't know after I do that any one of these things would end up to be positive or not. If they become negative, then X3 is not a good candidate. So it's a trial and error. So X3 is not. So this one really doesn't have anything that I can rely on. What about the next one? Do we have a candidate in, in this one? Looks like this guy is a candidate, but it is one of those things that is not going to work because it has a negative coefficient. I say, no problem here, problem here, so I'm going to add an artificial variable here. And then, this one is problematic, so I'm going to add another one here. And then add that in here. 
So I do an MR1 and MR2. This is a standard form. In original, I actually subtracted. I said minus MR1, minus MR2. Then I brought it to the other side. They became positive. OK. So that looks fine. No problem so far. Why not? Because S1 is 0, 0, 1 S1, no S1. R1, 0, 1, 0, no R1. <laughs> zero, one, zero, no R1. MR1. That's an MR1. You say, can't, can't get rid of that. Eh, MR1, there's an MR1 in there. I say, okay, we need to do something about that. What about R2? One, zero, zero, good candidate. There's an R2 in here. So we will get rid of this. How do I get rid of MR1 in there? How do I get rid of MR1 in there? I will look in here to see where R1 is. I'm going to multiply that by minus m and add it here. <coughs> Would that help me get rid of MR1 up there? Yes. What about MR2? Same thing. Multiply this where R2 is by M by minus M and add it up there. See if you can help me do that. Multiply and add see what we get. Either do it in one step or two steps together, as you do. See what the new Z will be. These things would remain the same. Only that one will change. It is Z. You can actually add those coefficients. That's a minus 1 plus 1 is plus 1 multiplied by minus m. Okay. So that's a minus m. So now with that z and this, can I use R1, R2, and S1 as my basic variables? Yeah. Yes. Because there is one S1 in this one, no S1 anywhere else. There is one R1 here, plus one R1 here, nothing in here and nothing in here. 
There is one R2 here, nothing here, and nothing here. So now I can start my tableau. So Z, my basic variables, which are S1, R1, R2, the problem under X1, I have um, 3 minus 1 and 2, 3 minus 1 and 2, under X2, I would have 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3. Under x3, I would have 2, 1, and 2, 2, 1, and 2. Under x4, under x4, I would have 3, negative 1, and 4, 3, negative 1, and 4. Under S1, I have 1, 0, 0. Under S2, I have 0, 0, negative 1. Under R1, I have 0, 1, 0. And under R2, I would have 0, 0, 1. On the right-hand side, I have 20, 10, and 15. The 0 comes from here. Under X1, I have minus 10 minus M. Under x2, I have minus 9, minus 5m. Under x3, I have 4, minus 3m. Under x4, I have negative 5, minus 3m. Under s1, I have 0. Under S2, 0. Under R1, 0. Under R2, 0. And minus 25M. Which one did I make a mistake? S2? There is no S2 here. S2 in, I'm sorry, where? This, it shouldn't be zero. What should it be? You see that? I multiplied this by minus m, but I didn't add it here. That is plus m s2. And that's what he was kept telling me, and I didn't pay attention. So there is a little M here under S2. There is a little plus M. So this is the tableau that we will start our first iteration with. Same things that we wrote underneath 
the other tableau. What is the first thing that we write? Solution. solution. We say the solution. For you that you have room, please write these things underneath the tableau. Okay? Write these things underneath the tableau. Solution. <coughs> what is the solution? x1 equal x2 equal x3 equal x4 equal 0. That represents the origin. s1 equal s1 equal 20 s2 equals 0, r1 equals 10, r2 equals 15. What was the second step? What is the second information that you need to write underneath the tableau? Is this an optimal solution? Is this an optimal solution? That is what you usually do. Okay? In this case, we will add a little bit to it and we will modify that line. In this case, we would ask whether this solution is feasible or not before we say optimal. No infeasible solution ever is optimal. For the infeasible solution you never ask that question. It does not make sense to ask a qu whether something is optimal or not if it is not feasible. In the previous cases we started with a feasible solution, we continued with a feasible solution. In this case, this solution is not feasible. So, that sentence is changed to this. Feasible No. Okay. Feasible? No. It is not feasible. The reason. You need to say the reason. Artificial variables in bases and and very very important and greater than zero so artificial variables can be in the basis and be zero that we can have, but artificial variables in the basis and greater than zero. Where is the basis? It's right here. This is, this is the basis. Basis is the set of basic variables. Okay? So it is in here. R1, R2 in the basis and their values is greater than zero. So this solution is not feasible. If a solution is not feasible, we don't even ask about optimality. But we will continue with the rest of the step. What is the next step? 
What is the next thing that we say? What is the third thing that we say? We say entering variable. How did we select an entering variable in a maximization problem? We looked for the most negative. We looked for the most negative in the zero. What is the most negative number in here? For x2, which is minus 9 minus 5m. That's the most negative number. This one, 4 minus 3m minus 5 minus 3m minus 10 minus m are all larger than this. This is more negative. So this is my entering variable. If you don't write them underneath each other, that's what is going to happen. That's my entering variable. OK, entering variable x2. The reason? Most negative in 0. Next one, leaving variable. Leaving variable. To do the leaving variable, we will do the ratios and we will pick the min ratio. So the ratios are twenty over one, twenty over one, which is twenty, ten over two. 10 over 2, which is 5, and 15 over 3, which is 5. And we will select among these two. If you were, which one would you select? R1. He's selecting R1. Why? That's the row with most zeros. That's the row with? What is that? The most zeros. The most zeros. OK. That's one thing. What else? It's easier to work with two, because you're multiplying by 1 half, than 3, which is 1 third. Other than that, it's just a process that you have to go through. So we will select that. OK. So in the long run, that may not be a good selection. But we, we don't have any other way of doing it. Okay. So we'll pick one arbitrarily. Now, if this was 17, I would definitely go with that. I don't want to deal with 1 over 17 numbers. Uh, at least, not, uh, not that early. OK. So this is going to be, now true or false? I'm not doing this calculation. Minus 25m over minus 9 minus 5m for the min ratio because this number is negative. No, because this number is negative. Yes, no. No, has nothing to do with this. We never do this. Now, this is a wrong tableau because this number is negative. 
m is positive, minus 25m is negative number. We cannot have negative number on the right-hand side. That's true or false? You can have anything in here, okay? Now, I ask you a test question. Why can't you have anything in here? Look at what I have erased somewhere down there. It says, finish the class? We we'll finish the class? Yes. I have six minutes or I have six minutes past the time? Six minutes left. Six minutes left. Oh, thank you. OK. Remember those things that I had, non-negativity constraints? I said x1 greater than 0, x2, x3, x4, s1, s2, r1, r2. Did I say anything about z? Z is unrestricted. It can be anything. It can be anything. So that you process it, you go to the next tableau. You process it, you go to the next tableau. Mm hmm You say leaving variable R1, reason, mean ratio, and in parentheses you put arbitrary, which means there is a tie. And then you say my pivot is And then do you do an iteration, which means you create the new tableau. How do you create the new tableau? You will have one thing in mind, one thing. The, this picture is going to be in your mind. This picture is going to be in your mind. In the next tableau, in the next tableau, what is replacing the, what is replacing what? X2 is going to replace R1. This is the picture in your mind. What is R1 column right now? This picture in the next tableau will be under X2. That is your goal. How do you make, how do you reach that goal? Through row operation. If I want to look like this, that number needs to become 1. To make that 1, multiply by 1 half. In the next tableau, in the next tableau, you use this tableau to go to the next tableau. The rest is regular simplex. You continue. The decision, the decision to find what is the most negative lies with the coefficient of m. If they are equal, then the other thing becomes important. If they are not equal, it relies what the... Have a good time.